think if anybody, my love for high quality quartz movements. Uh, please <laughs> don't change channels. <laughs> Viewers drop. <laughs> because it is very interesting. But some of these, and I would like to show you how well they thought through. And there are some beautiful technical solutions uh, in quartz. So please bear with me because I will make it uh, um, uh, worth your while, definitely. This is why quartz has got just such a bad name. This is quite horrible. As you can see, this is just quite horrible. Very cheap movement and technically nothing exciting. It's just, well, as big as my thumbnail. You don't want that. This is the reason why people say, well, it's just quartz. I don't want a quartz movement in my collection. Again, bear with me. These are so much nicer. And there's so much more you can do as a watchmaker repairing these. These are two ETA movements and it is, well, so well designed and I would love to show you. This is just a simple quartz movement. And I will show you just the basic features of any quartz movement. And that there's still a lot to do to work on in a quartz movement. Because these are not cheap. And these are just nice. And you can see there is some movement here. with just uh, a gear train and jewels and well it just looks like a normal timepiece here as well uh, again on this side it's hard to tell well you can but uh, at first sight, it's just an, uh, a watch movement, either mechanical or coarse. This one is way, way, way smaller. And every quartz movement, hey, Kian, hi there. Um, every quartz movement has got the same features, and I would love to show you. And once you get the logic of that, same as uh, uh, mechanical movements, you got the, uh, the mainspring, a gear train, an escapement, and a balance wheel. The same here. It's all basically the same. Well, basic features. I do miss my coffee. One moment, because I'm not gonna make the end of the of this are always some um, the basics of quartz movements uh, some items are always there and maybe if you um, seen just a couple and worked on it this tube in there is the same as a very small one in there that's the casing of the quartz crystal. This is the casing of the quartz crystal. And I will show you in a minute uh, what the quartz crystal, crystal is like. This blob here, the black stuff, that is the IC integrated circuit. Or this is a uh, circuit mounted device. These are the brains of any quartz movement. As you can see over there, 
here on the other side of the movement, there's a very small blob. Then one thing they all have in common is this coil. And then I will show you and deconstruct uh, this quartz movement and I will show you how it works. Quite big and bulky mega quartz from Omega. And uh, earlier quartz. And it's nice to show you the inside with because there's been quite a development in quartz movements. And then you can see uh, a development, but quite a few things are just exactly the same. As you can see, very early quartz. Here is the integrated circuit, and this one is actually soldered. You see, and so the black blob is just an, uh, a development in that. It's just electronics, and here you can see the coil. And what happens with the coil, uh, I will show you in a minute because that's quite nifty. And here we have the quartz crystal, the oscillator itself. And the rotor precision is very, very nice. <laughs> well spotted, Kian. <laughs> and another feature, uh, which is not necessary anymore, is here a um, uh, condenser, uh, uh, like a trimmer. Uh, you can uh, fine tune accuracy if the crystal if you take a slice of it and if you bend it if you bend it up and down it will get uh, there will be a, a difference in potential plus and a minus, like a battery. And it uses the other way around as well. If you have a slice of the crystal and you put a different voltage on it, um, positive and negative, it will vibrate. And that vibration is very, very constant, always the same. So that's why you, we can use it as an oscillator to, uh, to tell time. As simple as that. So that happens here. Here is a battery. And that supplies uh, a plus and a minus in voltage. Here is the crystal. So with the, the brains, uh, the, back blo the black blob of the brain, this one will vibrate, always the same, extremely constant. And this blob will say, once a second, it will give a signal to this coil. And a coil you can see as a magnetic switch a magnet you can switch on and off. So a magnetic switch you can turn on and off exactly um, every second, then this will happen. Well, this is a coil. A friend of mine gave, uh, gave this model from uh, a step motor and I'm so happy with it. Um, I'm so glad I'm allowed to use it. This is like a coil and with a magnetic switch you can turn on and off. Here this one is a permanent magnet with a small pinion. If I move it you can see it not rotates easily, it just flicks because it's a magnet. So every time 
this coil get a pulse every second exactly on the second because of the quartz movement this um, magnet permanent magnet will make one step one step one step one step always in the same direction because of the shape of this and if this just makes every second just one step you can see here at the uh, well, gear train it moves and with some hands attached you can tell time so this piece of a step motor is just about exactly the same as uh, the inner uh, uh, inner workings of the quartz movement and I will show you because under the microscope it is quite visible and then I will uh, deconstruct the movement and then you will see exactly how it works and for me uh, that's when it became quite interesting uh, how well designed the fall through uh, ports actually is. Thank you.